What's up YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to be reviewing the new lossless scaling update. Now I've already reviewed lossless scaling in a prior video, but this new update includes adaptive frame generation. For those of you who are unaware what lossless scaling is, it is a app that is hosted on Steam. It only costs about $7 and it introduces a version of unofficial frame generation as well as upscaling methods. Probably one of the best $7 you will ever spend, to be honest. So with this new update with adaptive frame generation, prior, all we could do was scale as like a 2x frame generation, 3x frame generation, or 4x. With adaptive, you can actually set a target frame rate. So if your game is essentially hitting around 50 FPS, you're not quite getting that nice smooth 60 you can go into the settings and change it to 60 and it'll introduce frame generation in a decimal version of frame generation, which I don't even think anything can do right now. And AMD hasn't done this, Nvidia hasn't done this. And here we are, we've got a small time developer that releases a $7 app and he's already creating better versions of frame generation than multi-billion trillion dollar companies. So here, this just came out on March 8th on Saturday, and it was in a beta state. Now it's actually been released as a stable update, but the new mode includes this adaptive frame generation mode. And we will be doing some performance testing to show you guys how well this works in a highly modified version of Skyrim called Nulvis. All right, so here we are in game and I put my performance overlay in the top left so you guys can see what's going on in my system. I have a 4080 Super, a CPU is a 9800X3D and 32 gigs of RAM. And I picked this specific Skyrim mod list because it really maxes out my system, especially my GPU. And it's to the point where I am just barely not running this game at 60 FPS in certain areas, especially in areas out here like in the fields. And yeah, when I come out here where the grassy area is, you can see my performance starts dipping down to like 50 FPS, sometimes going down to the 40s, depending on where I am. So what I can do with this new update with lossless scaling, so let's go ahead and switch over to lossless scaling here. And these are my default settings. So type, you want to keep this on LSFG 3.0. That's lossless scaling frame generation 3.0. And then this is the new mode that we're testing out today, the adaptive. And we can set now our target frame rate. So before you could just change it to fix. That was the only option you had. And then you had a 2x multiplier, 3x, 4x, as high as you wanted to go at the cost of latency. So today we are testing out adaptive at 60 FPS. And then the flow scale here, they actually renamed the setting. So it's now called flow scale and it gives you a lot better description of what it actually does. And for the sake of this video, I'm just going off of what it says here to keep the game resolution around 50%. So I actually put it at 60%, but this is kind of the range you want depending on your resolution that you're running your games at. And then your capture API. So there's two different modes here. Any version of Windows older than Windows 11 24H2, you want to use DXGI. Otherwise, if you're running on the latest version like I am on the 24H2 Windows 11, you want to use WGC because otherwise you're gonna see stutters if you use this other mode here. And then the Q target, this was another new feature that they came out with in the latest update of lossless scaling. And it gives you a rundown of how to use this. So essentially if you had light GPU usage, you could try to use zero. And then one is like a balanced mode. And then two is if you had really heavy GPU uses. So we might try that one a little later because I know this game is essentially maxing out my GPU. So you can pause the video and take a look at all these settings and copy them for yourself. But for now, we are just gonna be hitting this scale button and then going back into our game before it counts down. And there it goes. So it says right here, it actually lowered the frame rate a little bit, but it's showing us that our frame rate is 45 and then if you see in the top left it's kind of hard to see but it's showing you it's 45 slash 60 and if i start running around here i can immediately tell that this is like a 60 fps which is great 
So that way you don't have to like stick with just 2x frame generation or 3x. You can get it down to essentially a decimal place of a frame generation. And then it uses a lot less strain on your system and it also keeps that latency lower, which is the biggest problem with using lossless scaling. So as you can see, my latency really isn't too bad. It's kind of run around like 20 or so. Sometimes going a little higher than 20. And then your standard latency is, I think it's around like 16, if I remember right, if I unscale. So that way I can run this game at a 4K with the ultimate profile that I showcased in my last video. Go ahead and check that out if you're interested. I'll link that in the top right. But now I can use the ultimate profile with my system that was recommended to use with a 4090. And I can actually use that now with my 4080 Super and get this smooth 60 FPS at 4K with the ultimate resolution settings. And this works for any game, by the way, and any system. So if you have lower spec systems, Obviously, I have a pretty nice system here, but if you have a lower spec system and you're just trying to get a certain game to run at 60, this is probably the best way to do it without paying for like paid mods or anything like that. It's just a $7 app in Steam and it is absolutely awesome. So I'm going to go ahead and do some testing here. We're going to unscale and just for the sake of Seeing what this can do, let's bump this up to 120 FPS and see what it does to our latency. And also with our system, see how much it's running on our GPU once it scales. All right, so there it goes. We've hit our target frame rate of 120 FPS. Oh, and this is another good thing to go right now while I'm in this menu is there is one problem with running adaptive frame rate with the loss of scaling is even if you're getting a higher FPS like I am right now because I'm in a menu, so you can see it's run around 500 FPS, it's still gonna try to target it to the lower FPS that you have set in the application. Now, I'm actually hoping that this will be a future update I don't know if the developers can figure out like how to make it like an uncapped frame rate. However, if it goes lower than the target frame rate, then the adaptive scaling kicks in and tries to maintain that frame rate. Because like when I'm in white run and I have this setting and this mod list, I can actually run this game at around like 70 FPS. But if I turn on the adaptive frame generation, then it's just going to target down to 60 and you're not going to be able to get the full uncapped frame rate that your system can potentially handle. So right now, we just unpause from the game here. This is running at 120 frames per second. That's our target. And it did increase our latency just a little bit, but it's honestly not bad and it's still really smooth, which is just crazy. This is, let's pull out here. Let's just do like a third person mode. And I know that YouTube cannot capture this. YouTube caps out at about 60 FPS. But take my word for it, this is crazy smooth on my end. Like, really smooth. And then just for kicks, I did want to test out some of these settings here, the Q target. Since my system does use quite a bit of GPU, I might have to try to use this too and see if that helps with any of the latency. I don't think it's going to do a whole lot, but it's worth trying. So there just kicked in. And I'm honestly really not noticing a big difference between the, those settings. If I keep it at... I've even tried putting it at zero. I've tried putting it at two and also one. So I think I'm just going to be sticking with that one setting. Go back to our scaling here, put it back to one, unscale, rescale. And then one last thing we can do before I conclude this video, to keep this even smoother and trying to get our frame time a little more smooth, what we can do is if we know exactly kind of how our game is running, we can go into a program called Riviera Statistics Tuner. It comes with MSI Afterburner. And you can set a frame limit here. So 
for example, let's just set a 45 because I know that's kind of where it's running when I have this adaptive frame target on. Let's go back to 60 FPS. We'll unscale and then rescale here. And then I'll show you guys what happens. Okay, so now we've capped our frame rate and we actually might need to go a little lower. So it looks like my game is running actually around like 40 with the adaptive frame generation on. So let's go back into that Riviera statistics tuner and change it to a 40 cap. And then if we go back into game, so you can see that my frame time has essentially flatlined. So that's a good way to get rid of stuttering in any video game. You don't actually have to use this with lossless scaling, but you, this is just a good way to limit your target resolution so that you can try to eliminate as much stuttering as possible. And you can see right now that that's, that line is like essentially flat because we know exactly where our system is running this with the adaptive frame rate. And then we cap our frame rate and then we would turn on the adaptive frame target 60. And now we've got ourselves an incredibly smooth, highly modified Skyrim experience. And again, like I was saying, this works on any game. This is just an example because I know that these mod lists really push my system to the absolute maximum. So anyway, that'll do it for this video. If you guys have any questions on how to use this new lossless scaling, let me know down below in the comments. I'll be doing some more videos like mod lists for Skyrim, some PC tips and tricks. So subscribe to the channel if you're interested in that. And as always, have a wonderful day.